It's the crack of dawn on a cold and uninviting autumn morning. WBU light welterweight champion Shay Neer is already at work. Ten miles every day before daybreak, just the warm-up in a fanatical training regime that's taken Neary from an unfancied club fighter to the pinnacle of his profession and earned him the label, Britain's most exciting fighter. Neary's building up to the fourth defence of his world title and the most important night of his professional career to date. Not only a fight with a tough South American champion Juan Carlos Villarreal, but live national exposure on ITV in front of a huge Saturday night audience. It's a fight he dare not lose. Everything's at stake. This is the story of Shay Neary's career to date and his rise to the top in sport's toughest business. His qualities are uh, determination, strength, heart, uh, durability and punching power. After that, I don't think he needs anything else. <laughs> He's got, he's got a lot of respect from from all the people in Liverpool. Um, you know, he, he gives a lot of respect back. He, he's a lovely fella. Uh, a lot of time for everyone. Well, Shay's, um, you know, he's, everyone knows at the moment he's a, he's, he's a great fighter, but personally we know how dedicated he is and uh, what, you know, what a professional athlete he is. And hopefully, you know, five years from now we'll be talking about him, you know, being, being the best in the world and, and has gone on to much greater things. Here is one of the most colourful fighters, certainly of this decade. I mean, he's always in good fights, and really, he makes the other guy fight because of his style. He's a great, what I would call a television fighter. He's all action. He's fantastic to watch. Uh, he's dedicated. He's got so much hunger in his eyes to win. He's got the will to win. You know the old great saying, the eye of the tiger? Oh, dear, that Perfect 10 in regards to attacking. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring now, the champion, the Gay Arena saw one of the gamest exhibitions of boxing ever put on for a world championship. Ernie Roderick of Liverpool was challenging the Negro Henry Armstrong, and he started off in the attack. But Homicide Henry has a terrific reputation for a non-stop fighter, and he lived up to it through every minute of the 15 rounds of this battle. There was action in every round. Ernie Roderick was well beaten, but he displayed so much courage and so much die-hard spirit that he won the admiration of the whole world. Courage and die-hard spirit have been the trademarks of Liverpool fighters. Echoes of past greatness, a constant reminder of the standards required. Liverpool's got an amazing fight tradition. And going back to the days of the Liverpool Stadium, the purpose-built arena that was around for many years, um, it used to be known as the graveyard of champions, I think, because in the old days the champions kept losing their titles there. Fights were just wonderful occasions there. But in this packed house at the stadium, well, you could get big odds it won't go that. Oh, and there you are, but we didn't quite expect it to be that way. And one wonders uh, what's happened to Joey's chin in a few fights like this. He's done this in the amateurs a bit. Oh, but he came back. What an explosive comeback, as if to say, oh no, you can't do that to me. Embarrass me in front of my home crowd. Well, Liverpool are the history of turning out top fighters, especially 25, 30 years ago. I mean, they, they were coming out of the wallpaper in Liverpool. And uh, Neary is, in fact, a throwback to those times, probably the 50s. Um, the reason I say that is he's hard, he's dedicated, he'll fight anybody, any time. And not only will he fight anyone any, any time, he's capable of beating them. And that was the old Liverpool fighter. You know, they were, they were very, very capable, very, very tough.
Liverpool has had some wonderful fighters, people way back before my time, certainly Nell Tarleton, um, later on Alan Rudkin, um, John Conti obviously was the, the finest fighter that Liverpool's ever produced, I don't think anybody would dispute that. And then on from there, Paul Hodkinson in the 80s, and now Neary. Boxing's in the blood in Liverpool. The people have always had an affinity with their champions, and the fight game has been interwoven into the fabric of the city's culture since the days of bare knuckle fairs, Muggs Alley, and the machismo of the docks. Fighters have always been stars, and stars are keen to be seen with fighters. In recent years, the conveyor belt of champions has slowed, but the late 80s and early 90s produced Andy Holligan and Paul Hodkinson as standard bearers for the region. Hodkinson was a world champion, but never captured the imagination like Neary or gained the credibility of Liverpool's prodigal son, John Conte. and even hear the count but he'll show his fingers his legs are almost like an imprint in a playpen and it's all over he cannot see where he is there as the ring is usually besieged and Conti has retained his championship in the third round and there's chance of easy easy from the Liverpool crowd I used to watch the big fights you know like uh, when Conti used to fight or no, while I was fighting, you know, from like a young kid, my dad used to be, have the fights on. We used to watch the fights, but it wasn't like, is we going to be a boxer? It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be a boxer. But um, it was always going to be a footballer all the time. And um, it just changed all of a sudden when I started getting into it in boxing. Well, it was John Conti in the late 70s who did a superb job for Liverpool boxing. I mean, he was an immaculate boxer, good puncher, good looking fighter. He won the WBC light heavyweight title at the time when you had to be good. He spent his early years with, under my father's tuition. And then he, you know, he put Liverpool and Kirby on the map. Then all these years later, you get Shane Neary doing the same thing. Shane Neary's right up there with the best in Liverpool, John Conti apart. I don't, I don't think anybody could claim that he could, could live in the, in, the, in the same heights that Conti reached. Um, but he's up there with Paul Hodkinson and, and the other champions of recent years. James Patrick Neary, Jimmy to his friends, is born on the 18th of May 1968 on Mill Street in a tough inner city area bordering Toxteth and Dingle. He's the third child of seven. Neary's sense of identity stems from his Irish ancestry. His father Seamus came to Britain from Dublin as a small child in the 40s in a stream of post-war immigration. Neary Senior was a huge influence on his middle son's life. Moreover, the boxer took his father's name into the ring. When I turned uh, professional, I turned 1992, but he died in 89, and I just decided to call myself Shane Neary, because his name was Seamus, Seamus Neary, but everyone used to call him Shay, all his family and you know, like uh, his sisters. So when he died and I turned, turned pro, I had the chance to change my name and I just changed my name to Shane Neary. A small but sport-mad Jimmy Neary attends the West Derby Comprehensive School in the early 80s, but gives no hint at that stage as to his future career path. What I remember about Shay was um, he was short in stature, but big on personality. Uh, he had a wide circle of friends, he was very, very popular. And if he had fast hands at that time, it wasn't for doing geography homework. He wasn't a fighter in school. I mean, it's a boys' school, and, and you do get one or two who fight. 